Hey, holy good Lord, this book has been a long time coming. I say that because I'm not 100% certain what my first X-Men comic ever was, but it's, if I had to narrow it down to two or three options of possibilities, this is it. This might be the first X-Men book I ever read. Um, it's one of the, it's my first exposure to so many things that I didn't understand at all what was going on. I just read it and found it interesting. And then it wasn't until years later when I read more X-Men stuff when I would come back and revisit this. And I'm like, okay, I get this. So, X-Men and the Teen Titans. It doesn't say X-Men versus the Teen Titans, so it's already kind of an interesting crossover. Get the whole double page spread in here. All these characters. The thing that I find interesting in a weird way is, um, at the time, there was a time when Wolverine, Wolverine was always awesome, but he was not the, like, the crazy, insane, popular character of all these books. And he'd just be like a little kind of innocuous figure in the background. He's just part of the group. They would do awesome shit. If this was redrawn today, they'd have Wolverine right up front. And I like that you got Robin and Cyclops up front. The leaders of the fucking team leading the charge, getting kind of the showcase. Wolverine's just back here in the distance. Um, I think my original kind of... Oh, God. This book also is coming apart in the middle. Um, the... Uh, God, what the hell is I going to say? Yeah, I um, my first exposure to characters that are comic books, I believe, was like Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Fireman, Fireman, God, I cannot talk today. Iceman and Firestar, holy shit. Um, those characters, and then there, there was some issue or some episode of a cartoon where the X-Men were fighting the Juggernaut. Cyclops was using his like laser beams to blow a trench in the ground in front of him, and Storm flew in the air. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but those are my kind of my first exposures. But Spider-Man and Superman might be the first comic book characters I was ever really aware of. Well, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. Like those are the big pop culture ones. Um, Superman from the movie, Batman just because he's everywhere. Uh, I think I saw him at Scooby-Doo. might be the first plus I ever saw him besides watch my mother watching the old Adam West cartoon. But Spider-Man, the cartoon. Spider-Man is amazing friends. But then I'd pick up, start picking up Spider-Man comics. And you can't just help but start noticing pictures or letters pages or something referring to the other teams. The Avengers, the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, whoever they were. And there is the, the hot redhead and the guy with the eye lasers and the the, the, the the black chick with the white hair and some dude with pointy mask and big, you know, I don't know. These are your first exposures to him. And as a kid, you're like, I don't know what's going on. Um, I was always like, well, Robin's got to be awesome because he's taught by Batman and Batman is awesome. So that is a hell of a drawing. Marvel Comics is power. Um. And now a word or two from Kitty Pride, and then she's down here, and we're cute too. Drawn by Simonson. Um, I wanted to point out something. I never knew this until somebody else pointed it out to me. Walter Simonson, if you see his name down here, I guess I should bring it up closer to the camera. He kind of signs his name, I guess, like a it's like a like a dinosaur kind of thing, like an animal lizard thing. See how it's like Simonson, S-I-M-O-N-S-O-N, but like the S-O-N, the sun at the end is like the going starting from the head going back this way is like a head and a neck and then the o is its body and then the back end of it's like i i guess that's what that is but drawn uh in the date it's seven six of 82 and then this book is published why do i not see a year holy shit is it buried in here God, it, holy crap sorry i'm just looking through this text trying to see um the year, besides the date of the sign, sign signature on the artwork. Right here. Oh, yeah. Copyright 1982. So, good Lord. I mean, I'm five years old when this is made. Like, to think that the X-Men, Cyclops, and Jean Grey, and Professor X, and Storm, and then... I didn't know anything about DC Comics. I read almost zero DC Comics as a kid, and very little even to this day. But I, I know Robin... And the end. 
all these other characters, I had no idea who they were. I don't know who this giant guy was at the time. I, I remember thinking, that's a hell of a drawing. That's a great, especially now, the ink work of Walt Simonson. Looks amazing. But <clears throat> to think that these characters have been going on this long and they stayed like this prime version of themselves for a long time. So Chris Claremont is the story. Walter Simonson, penciler. Terry Austin, finisher. Tom Orzakowski. Man, that's an A-plus team if you've ever had one. What is the price? $2 for a book in 1982. Um, I mean, comics were a lot cheaper back then, but even $2 for this feels inexpensive. I mean, it's pretty thick. I mean, it's a big book. I don't think there's any ads in it because it's like a premier thing. Marvel and DC present. But to only have to charge $2? I wonder if this sold in like vast numbers. Um, this was my first exposure to Walter Simon Simonson artwork. And I really liked it. In a way, my dumb child brain really didn't differentiate between the fact that this was Walter uh, Walter Simonson. And then when I ended up started reading the classic X-Men books, that those were by John Byrne, I didn't know enough to know a difference. Like, it looks enough to me as a kid who doesn't know shit uh, to be the same guy. Now, older me, obviously I could see the difference. But this, like I said, might have been my first introduction to any of these things. I didn't know anything about DC Comics. I don't know who any of these characters were. This chair thing... Metron and this chair that lets him do whatever. I don't know. But then cut to the X Mansion in the danger room. I, for the longest time, I didn't understand that Colossus was throwing Wolverine. I just thought he was like swinging at something and he's just like leaping through the air. Now, what good does it throw Wolverine have him ball up like this to dive over lasers? Like, it's just an action scene. It's a choice. And that fastball special that they would always do kind of. You know, I don't know. It kind of works. It kind of doesn't. Um, and Wolverine's like, how long do we have to do this? And he's like, until you get it right. And for the upteenth time, call me Professor. And Wolverine's like, sure thing, Chuck. Um, you know, like I said, this is my first exposure to all these guys. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know who this Wolverine guy is, but he had knives that come out of his hand. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. And an interesting, like the way Claremont does this awesomeness of demonstrating um, how the team's powers work. Like, they do this this maneuver where Wolverine's flying and, and uh, Nightcrawler helps him change trajectory so the missiles that were chasing him blow up and miss him. And then all these missiles are flying at Colossus and it just bounce off his body. That's awesome. Wolverine's like deflecting missiles with his claws and of course Nightcrawler just has to teleport away. They blow things up and Professor's like, damn, these guys are good. Um, and again, a more first time to see, what, like this is maybe my first time I ever saw Cyclops. And he like lifts his glasses and his eyes shoot lasers and he's able to like knock all these pool balls into the socks, sockets. Like, all right, and there's some chick, she controls weather. She's got a little rain cloud. That's kind of cool. They're in a mansion. Professor X has fallen asleep. And then this weird hand of whoever the fuck this guy is touches his head and basically absorbs his thoughts. And the essence of his memories drawn forth. Her name was Jean Grey. She was an X-Men. So this is post-Dark Phoenix Saga. I had no idea who Jean Grey was. I had no idea what the Phoenix Saga was. Not one idea at all. Except that as this story demonstrates to us, is that she was someone that they all knew and she was important to all of them in some way. So they're pulling her the the memory of Jean Grey from all of them. You got Cyclops, Colossus, Nightcrawler, Wolverine, and Storm. This is always interesting to me because Wolverine's sitting here in bed asleep, and like his claws are out, or at least partially out. Is it are they out because he's having like a a nightmare, and so his claws come out? Um, and it does a little quick kind of text explaining in very basic detail, you know who Jean Grey was. It says she was Scott Summers' true love. She became Phoenix and her power saved the universe, then threatened to consume it. In the end, it destroyed her. And so they're drawing all these memories of Jean Grey from them. She's going to Kitty Pride, but Kitty wakes up and she is woken up to see that face. That's Dark Side, right? That's supposed to be him? I guess. But all I know is I remember seeing this and imagining waking up to that 
which scared the shit out of me. And like for these flat old school 1982 colors, works really well. And I didn't know that Kitty Pride's powers were to phase, but she like phases through the ground. The team wakes up, they're all charging out there. She's freaked out. Whatever's going on, she's having a nightmare. And um, but they're all saying they all had a nightmare. And um shit, that's crazy. So Cyclops is looking around and he sees this like vision of Jean Grey, Scott, my love, help me. And she like falls into him and kind of evaporates like a ghost and he he just sees this thing has a little bit of an over-the-top freak out. But story-wise, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, whoever she is, I didn't know who she was. Now that I know, this holds a lot more significance. And I love this drawing of her, like, walking towards him and just fading into nothing, begging for help. The love of your life who's gone and you're still reeling from the pain. And it's like you see her ghost and she's suffering or something and needs his help. Yeah, I would freak out, too. So, interesting. And now you get into, again, this stuff, I just, like, it's just my opinion, but the, the DC stuff was never interesting. I could never get into the Teen Titans in a giant building shaped like the letter T. Like, if you love it, you great. I, I'm happy, good for you. I, I, I'm not saying it's, I, I can't stand it. It's, it's laughable to me. When you have a team of the X-Men with, like, giant metal guy and eye laser guy and storm girl and guy with knives in his hands and little blue demon dude. And then you got a bunch of, like, kids in a building shaped like a letter T. Uh, okay, you know. But I can't speak to the characters because I've read almost nothing about any of them. I did think this idea of this um, raven, and she's got like a bird avatar symbol kind of thing. But here she is in her dreams being attacked by a flaming bird, the phoenix. That's kind of creepy. She wakes up screaming. I don't know who Starfire was. She's kind of hot. And then I didn't understand that this dude could change shape. I didn't get why he could. He tried to like, she's like, I saw an image of a flaming bird. He's like, well, tell me, maybe I can make it look like this. And then it sets off Starfire. She like tries to attack the flaming bird, like calm down. But she says Phoenix. So DC Comics girl knows who Phoenix is, the Phoenix force at least. So that's interesting. And like a stupid asshole, she realized she's just attacking her own shape-shifting teammate who she just saw. She's like, yeah, don't laugh. The Phoenix is a horrible thing. Like... You know, it, that sucks. We we got to alert our friends. Cut to bad guys trying to get away from a co from the cops. And then suddenly, I don't know, some kid flash, he like took his engine apart and scatters pieces of it across two states. Um, Donna Troy, Wonder Girl, she's coming down. She's meeting up with the team. Victor Stone, cyborg, a cybernetic organism. I thought this was interesting. He's saying, what a mess. This used to be a skyscraper till it got trashed by the X-Men. Media describes them as outlaws. I wonder why the Titans have never tangled with them. So me as a kid, I'm like, so are, are these guys exist in the same world? They basically say they are. I didn't understand the idea of a crossover. and They're just making shit up. We're like, we're just going to pretend they've always existed together somehow, but never crossed paths. Which I, I kind of don't go for that. I'd rather there be some kind of like dimensional portal that brings one team in from one universe to another or something like that. Rather than just doing a story where they just somehow just happen to exist in the same world but have never crossed paths. Because that instantly invalidates the story. It's not in canon. It doesn't matter. It didn't happen. So who the fuck cares? None of this happened because they don't exist in the same world. So it's irrelevant. It might be well drawn, well written, but does it matter? That's my point. I'd rather have, like, Darkseid open up a portal and send the Titans into the Marvel Universe, and then, then they go interact with the X-Men there, or something like that, not just this, let's just pretend they all existed together. Uh, big giant skyscraper city shot, Robin's there, some monster, he runs in, again, I didn't know who this, the Terminator was, all I knew is, like, uh, the Terminator is Schwarzenegger, and he's awesome, and this guy in this stupid-ass outfit, I hated it. Um... I still think it's a little over the top, especially with like the buccaneer boots and the chain mail and it's like every stupid thing thrown together. I kind of don't mind the mask like split in half. Um, of course, Walt Simonson draws it really well. I like how he blasts at Robin. He ducks out of the way. And he's like, you're going to have to do better than that. And Deathstroke's like, want to bet? So what I liked is the characterization in that even though I think that he looks stupid, he is portrayed clearly as a bad motherfucker in this comic book and takes out Robin. Now, 
That outfit of Robin's with his bare ass legs and stuff, it's kind of ridiculous, but he's trained by Batman. He's got to be one of the most badasses out there, right? And this guy took him out no sweat. So I'm interested instantly, again, I don't know who, who he is. I don't know anything about him, but this is my first and most prominent memory to this day of who Deathstroke is, is his characterization in this book. So, good times. Whoever the hell he is, he's taking out Robin. Uh... X-Men's landed a jet at the home of Jean Grey's parents, and they're talking to her, uh, their parents, about whatever. Um, I always thought this was a really interesting shot. I have to imagine Claremont said, okay, page, whatever, exterior shot. Jean Grey's parents' home. The Blackbird jet is landed in the backyard, you know, establishing shot of all the teams sitting together, um, talking. Wolverine's got his back to them. Nightcrawler's on the couch. Panel three, close-up of Cyclops' face as he expresses whatever, 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 and then three and four, Storm consults, you know, com consoles the mother. But look at this shot choice that Simonson did on Cyclops, this extreme top angle, top of his head, looking down across his visor and his nose and mouth barely in shot. That is a hard angle to get, but he nailed it, but it's a weird choice. Like, why'd you choose that then to be different? And... I don't know. Maybe that's it. But it kind of works. The visor has a very three-dimensional look. So weird, but interesting. Professor X does like a mental shot. Hey, I'm here. We got to do a thing. You know, blah, blah, blah. Things are going on. And um, it just shows him back at the X-Mansion. Now, Professor X is back here by himself. And Wolverine notices. He's like, all right, we're going, we're going to do what you, tell us to, what you tell us to do. We're on it. And he's like, but by the way, you're looking a little ragged. And Professor X is like, your concern is appreciated, Wolverine. The strain is considerable, but I have handled worse. Anyway, take care. Go do the shit. Handle business. Keep investigating. And then back with the Titans again. I don't know who any of these guys are. I got Robin knocked the fuck out. And so they're picking him up and he's kind of, you know, he's like, yeah, I got my ass handed to me. Again, I don't know anything about these characters, but I guess Starfire is talking about how her people ran across the Phoenix Force at one point, and that's how she's aware of them. And like this, it, I used to at one time I thought maybe this shot of her was supposed to be her. I didn't kind of understand what I was reading. It's a heck of a spaceship design. So, I like all the energy effects. I can see where Eric Larson pulls a lot of his stylings from in a lot of this stuff. And I'm not saying that as a detriment. Like Eric Larson is like a hybrid of Jack Kirby and Walt Simonson, and that's where you get. You know, Eric Larson. Um, again, they're talking, yapping, talking, yapping. And I don't know, they're kind of having some harsh words. And for whatever reason, she like makes out with Robin. So I'm like, all right, hot. I, you know, for a shot of this girl supposed to be kind of like a hot shot of her. It's kind of, it's kind of bland, but it still works. So what do I know? Um, this shot, these, it's such an interesting kind of way of doing colors. Like these weird cable things are just one flat color. Just all these flat colors. But I guess it's all they could do at the time. So I can't complain. It works. And Walt Simonson likes to do these high angled shots looking down far at something. I think there was one on, was it page one? Yeah. Um, sort of. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell what you're even looking at, which will make sense a little bit later. But crazy angle shot and this high angled shot looking down you'll see more of those in this book i remember thinking this is very like disorienting angle which works for the scene like you're way up high cut back to this guy in that stupid outfit deathstroke he's just sitting there drinking a i don't know wine or something like that but a whip shows up and snaps the glass in his hand so he he's on his he's action already jumps up throws some ninja stars cuts the whip and then chop something on this bad guy, this monster guy. And he's like, oh, I heard you were tough. I see that you are. Okay, so already he's kind of a badass. Whoever this human is, he's taking on these monsters and he's awesome. So again, another reason why, even though I thought he looked dumb, he's pretty badass. 
Shot of the X Mansion. Professor X is chilling out. This is a scene that stuck out in my mind. In fact, for a long time after I'd read this, years later, I thought this scene happened in the actual X Men comic. It wasn't until I reread this, I'm like, oh, this happened in this thing. But Starfire comes busting in because they decided that they figured out this is where the Phoenix Force is at. So she just busts in, screaming, yelling, "Your reign of terror is over!" Now Professor X uses like a mental force field. Can he do that? I remember seeing this. I'm like, oh, this is part of his power set. But Professor X's powers are like, you can read your mind. You can control your mind, right? But he does like a mental force field, slams her up against it. I love the energy and the power of it. Like her busting in and coming to a dead ass stop makes Professor X kind of awesome. But why the fuck can he do a force field with his brain? I don't get it. Anyway, she's knocked out, but then... The rest of the guys show up and they're able to overpower him, take him out, knock his ass out. And um, so they're like, what's wrong, Robin? And Robin's like, I don't know, Cyborg. Only breaking and entering, criminal trespass, vandalism, assault, and possibly attempted murder. That's us doing crimes. They're like, we're just trying to get to the bottom of something that's very dangerous. Suddenly, explosion. A bunch of monsters come busting in. I don't know who these monsters are. Somebody can tell. Are they parademons? I've heard of that. I don't, I don't know. Um, they... Proceed to take out the Titans, capture them all. Got them all bundled up except green shape-shifting guy. Okay. There's another one of those big, like, crazy shots. I gotta get my camera in better angles to get everything in here. Um, like that high angle on that ship or whatever the fuck it is. You know, again, very disorienting. Makes you feel like you're really high up looking at something that goes down... A long ways. Um, then you got, again, you got Deathstroke here leading all the guys. Now Wolverine comes up behind him, taps him on the shoulder with the cigar. He's like, got a light. And he swings hard at Wolverine. But Wolverine ducks and bashes him out of the way. So I'm like, oh, this Wolverine guy might be a bad motherfucker. And then Cyclops shows up, blows away a bunch of guys. Fighting starts. Explosions, fighting. But Wolverine take out this guy. Or at least got a shot in. So... That's pretty badass. So the X-Men do cool X-Men shit. And um, and Deathstrokes are like, I didn't count on the X-Men to intervene, but that's why they hired me, to deal with the unexpected. Um, yeah, anyway. But eventually, like, Deathstroke takes them out. Um, he, it The rifle fires a fear ray, amplifies her fears of height, so she falls. Um, the... The, the demon creatures rally and start taking out everyone. Uh, they all suddenly, Kitty, Nightcrawler, and Wolverine are just out. Um, a toxic cloud grenade fall, fails most of them. Cyclops is cut down by an energy dispenser bolt. And then Colossus is left, going out to Deathstroke. And Deathstroke just picks him up and throws him, and he's awesome. I'm like, oh, I guess he's awesome. Seems like it. Um, holy shit, look at that double page spread. This feels like some Jack Kirby shit that I've seen only some images of and I've heard about. I am not an expert on it, but I, I'm guessing this is some DC Comics Jack Kirby type stuff. Please, am I, am I getting this wrong? Whatever the hell it is, the drawing, the angle, the inking, the details, man, that is some crazy stuff. That is really cool. It's called The Wall. It's also called The Pages Coming Out of the Book. I didn't know who Darkseid was, but he's in charge of everything. They got all these teams captured. Um, I did not understand one bit about his beam, eye beams. It, I, this confused me for years. I'm like, what in the shit of shit is going on? I do not get it. I still don't know because I don't read DC Comics. I know that his eye lasers do that shit, but I mean, whatever. But he's a pretty imposing bad guy. I, I didn't know much about Darkseid, but I do kind of get it. Um, this is an interesting shot choice. Another high angle shot, but on all these big like circular discs and they got all the team members of the, the X-Men and I assume the Titans. No, I think the Titans are down here and the X-Men are up here. Strapped into the scene to like suck the life out of them or something. I don't know. Kitty's trying to phase out of it, but she can't. And so they activate the machine and you see all these screamy faces like Kitty's there, Storm's wincing in pain. 
um, Colossus. I, what I liked about it is all these faces, they're all kind of screamy. Cyclops is screamy, but only Wolverine's kind of like gritting his teeth, like enduring it and not screaming. Cyclops is, they all kind of, I mean, I guess Professor X is, Storm kind of is. I just kind of, it stood out to me like, this Wolverine guy, he's a tough little motherfucker. Now here's something, this is the first time I ever saw this. Didn't know what this was. Out of the flames, manifesting somehow some figure coming out of fire says, who dares? Like, I don't know what was coming. And I got to be honest, this is one of my favorite shots. This is the first time I ever saw this character. And I always thought that that D was an O. For years, I thought she said, who summons Orc Phoenix? I didn't know what Orc Phoenix meant. Like, I understood the word Phoenix, sort of. But what is Orc? I, I had no idea, you know. But I just assumed it was something I didn't know about. And so I just needed to learn. So she was Orc Phoenix. And then at some point, I, years later, I was reading the classic X-Men. They said Dark Phoenix. And I was like, oh, that's a D. That lettering sucks. You need to make that look more like a D. I mean, I can see the O obviously there. But, you know, this came out when I was five. But I wasn't reading until I was 10, 11, 12, something like that. I just I didn't know what I was reading. But whoever this chick is, she looked imposing and scary. And so DC Comics bad guy is calling on whoever, whatever, Marvel Comics bad guy. I don't know what's going on, but it's pretty awesome. And I liked how their hands reach out and touch and Cyclops is screaming, torturing the shit out of his soul. And to see them like happily joining hands and he's just hunkered over in sadness. So bad guys have joined forces. How they manifested Jean Grey Phoenix from the dead, I don't know. I mean, it, I'm sure it says in there. Another great shot, center shot of Dark Side. Whatever's going on, apocalypse. That's a cool thing. But eventually, um, all the bad guys take off, and then suddenly their restraints on the heroes lets them go. They could not get away. They're straining. Um, but then as soon as they're gone, they're released. Like, well, why? Why are they alive? Why did you leave them alive? Why'd you let them get away? They're just going to show up and fuck up your plans. Anyway, the Titans show up and then suddenly the X-Men are diving down. They're like, oh shit, we got company. And then this is a scene that stood out in my head forever. This big splash page of them meeting each other. Um, I'm not going to say it's the equivalents looking at each other one by one, but it's sort of in a way. Um, but I like that they meet each other and they're friendly. Um, so Cyclops is saying to Rob, like under the circumstances, stranger though we are, uh, strangers though we are, I suggest an alliance. My sentiments exactly. Robin says, I'm Cyclops. Robin, pleased to meet you. And then, um, Kitty's like, oh, that green guy looks about my age. He's kind of cute. This is the thing that stood out that gave me some of my first understanding of the characterization of Wolverine. Um, and I thought this was interesting. This Raven girl, again, I know nothing about her, but I'm, she's she's psychic. She can sense feelings, emotions. Can she read minds? I'm not sure exactly. But her thoughts here, there is in Storm an inner serenity, a beauty and nobility of the spirit that reminds me of Azar, Azar, so whoever that is. So I like that she's got that kind of like, that's some interesting characterization on Storm. But then she says, yet her companion Wolverine possesses a capacity for violence greater than even Coran, Coriandar's. I, I think that's supposed to be her, right? Is that Starfire? Co possesses a capacity for violence greater than her. Around him, I must forever be on my guard, lest his inner fury strike me down. So she can sense in him his violent inner rage possibilities. And he's just sitting there with his arms crossed looking at her. And Wolverine ain't stupid. He's got intuition and he's got common sense. And he's just like saying to himself, huh, I spooked the bird lady. I wonder why. I love it. It's so perfect. It's a perfect like two totally different characters that can sense things about each other and they're, each other is not wrong. She's totally right about Wolverine, but she doesn't know him. So she doesn't understand that if you're on his side, he's loyal to a fault and he'll go to the depths of hell to look out for you, protect you, defend you, especially if you're part of his family, his team, his life. But he's got an intense inner capacity for violence, but he doesn't unleash that on just anybody. And he's like, huh, I freak her out. I, don't, I wonder why. Like, he's not even aware enough that she, maybe she just senses his violent tendencies because he doesn't see himself that way. And he's also thinking to himself, he doesn't like working with his kids. 
Um, but then he also notices the air is getting thinner. This guy's like, right, we're losing our atmosphere. We've got about an hour left. So we've got to find a way to get out of here. So they're on this asteroid in space, which it showed earlier. So they get Cyclops on one side and Starfire on the other to be like propellants. So you got like Starfire there and Colossus like right up behind her. Get, get it, Colossus, to like brace her while she blasted the Cyclops. He's just holding himself up and using his eye beams to blast their way. And they run into this chair thing. They reach up, grab it, but then they find out here coming up. I'm just kind of getting ahead of myself. That um, you sit in the chair and use your thoughts and it can take you places. Because Kitty sits in. She's like, oh, I wish I were home. <laughs> Disappears. <laughs> she comes back. They're like, oh, it's controlled by thought. Professor X, you should run it. So, well, how are we going to... We can't all sit in the chair. So, green shapeshifter guy turns into a giant fucking Lockheed the dragon. I'm like, can he do that? He could grow to any size. Holy shit, that's a hell of a power set. So anyway, he grows big. Everyone can jump on him, and then he's going to carry the chair. They're all going to go back and fight Darkseid. You know, Starfire's making out with Colossus, you know, probably because he's feeling bad because Kitty's flirting with green guys. So Starfire's like, I'll make out with you, buddy. I'll give you this set of blue balls. You'll never know what to do with. You'll be able to pull them off and throw them at people when you turn into your big steel version. Anyway, they hop in the chair. They teleport away. We got to go stop Dark Side and Dark Phoenix. So there's a hell of a splash page. Big city shot. Big dragon thing flying through the air with all the characters. Um, sorry, I'm just looking for Wolverine. Nightcrawler. Am I stupid? Oh, he's right there. He's behind Starfire. Oh, so you got Colossus, Starfire in the middle, and Wolverine decided to get the trifecta in action. Good job. I, I bet she'd be into it. Anyway, they got to show up. They got to fight. Starfire's like, Wolverine, what's so funny? You're smiling. He's like, nothing, everything. I'm a scrapper, Starfire. I love a good fight. This looks to be one of the best. I don't mind dying. Just so far, I get a good shot at dark side. Like, he's like, God, I, this is going to be dangerous, but I want to get that motherfucker. I want to get him. Like, he shouldn't be fucking with this and fucking with the, the memory of Jean Grey. So, anyway, they show up. They're tracking things down. Um, green shapeshifter guy turns into a Wolverine. And he's like, there's so many smells, I can't sort them out. And the actual Wolverine character, he's like, I can't. Don't worry about it. Anyway, Wolverine gets zapped. Boom. And it's, and it's Deathstroke. And he's, like, kind of pissed that Wolverine got the drop on him before. He's like, now we're even. And let the battle commence. Fight, fight, fight. Blasting lasers, shooting, all kinds of fun stuff. Here comes the team. That's a great team shot of them all charging forward to, you know, get to the final battle and to the wherever they're at. Another great high angle shot looking down. This funny looking creature guy down here just staring at us. It's fun. You got Dark Phoenix. You got Dark Side. Um... This is kind of a funny, like, here comes, you know, Deathstroke. He shows up, and then Wolverine, he's just out of the blue. He's right there. And he's like, hey, we're going to play tag. Boom, you're it. But then Wolverine's like, shit, I missed. But I always like this shot of him, like, clawing hard, like, almost got him. And he just dives out of the way. Again, Deathstroke, kind of a badass. Starfire shows up to take on Dark Phoenix. She just knocks her out of the way. Like, you're just a stupid kid. Your stupid lasers just make me stronger. Um, the X-Men are fighting her. And... Um, I like this shot of like where, you know, they need, Darkseid needs Phoenix to use her energies to power this thing. You like, behold my dread and loving Lord, the hell pit is born. I love this shot of her standing or floating there, flaming Phoenix, shooting fire into the, this pit. Pretty awesome. Whatever's going on. A lot of talking. It's a Claremont X-Men book. So of course there's a lot of talking going on. Um, Professor X gets in this chair thing and he's able to create like a, I don't know, a mental energy knifey stabby thing into the, her back. I like how the flaming bird is like wincing in pain, the same as her physical body there. Um, there's so much text explaining what's going on. And it's it's well written. It makes sense. But yeah, whatever. The X-Men still trying to take on Deathstroke, but they decide to team up on him. While Wolverine's got him distracted, Cyclops takes him out. That finally knocks him down for once. And... You know, fight, fight, fight. They got to take everyone out. They blast out Darkseid's eyes, I guess. And there's just, I just, the way that Walt Simonson draws energy and fire and all this stuff, it's pretty awesome. Great poses on the figure. Again, it looks very John Byrne somehow, but um, 
It looks really good. Of course, you're going to have Dark Phoenix show up and see Cyclops. Come, my once and former love. Embrace your destiny. So here comes the flaming Dark Phoenix after Cyclops. And then it kind of absorbs into him. And everyone's watching. And when they're combined, I guess the memory of Jean Grey remembers who she is. Her memories, her loves, all that type of stuff. So she, you know, the combined powers of the two of them together he whips off his mask and shoots his optic blast that manifest as the phoenix force itself so that's interesting the phoenix force is in him but then it shoots out of his, his optic blast dark side is just standing there with his hands behind his back like he doesn't care giant explosion and they're all gone i don't know what that's supposed to mean but it's pretty awesome idea and then there's a bunch of people at a concert and they see this like explosion in the distance and the Phoenix Force taking off. I got to say this Phoenix Force shot for the longest time, I, I didn't read the face right. Like I saw its beak and an eye here, but I always thought this was like a distorted weird other eye over here. Like he's like kind of like goofy looking, like, Droop. but I hear and then it's other eye over here. I see its face now, but if they need to eliminate that little spot and it looks better anyway the phoenix force is taken off with dark side and its little fiery clutches and it opens up portals and rockets through the universe through time and space and dimension i love that shot of the phoenix force coming to the wall i guess there with these giant faces that wall that we've seen before and then we're back with the teams and they're all hanging out and everything's fine and they're talking and they're smiling and everything's back to together and man what a crazy adventure we just had and then an epilogue at this wall whatever whoever this dude at the beginning was metron again i don't know anything about who he is or what he does and i thought that was a hell of a last page i don't know what it means like obviously the phoenix force took him here and did it she integrate him into this wall what a great shot. I love the energy coming out of the eyes and the inking on this to give it such hard angular shapes like flat planes. It looks very three-dimensional. It looks amazing. So again, none of this matters, right? Because it's an alternate universe where these teams exist on the same planet. So I guess you could do anything with Dark Phoenix and Dark Side because it doesn't matter because it's not a real story. But it was fun. Again, my first exposure to all these guys, as far as I can remember. I loved it, and I was on board, and I started picking up the classic X-Men and regular uncanny X-Men and reading the stories of who all these people were and where they were going. And for years, I enjoyed who and what the X-Men were. Sorry I never got into DC Comics too much or the Teen Titans, but I appreciate that they have a history, a rich history, and a big fan base, and they are just as relevant. They're, I mean, honest, let's be honest, they're never as popular as the X-Men. Like, come on, who is? Especially in the 80s and the 90s. But just because I didn't read them doesn't mean I'm saying that they weren't good. They just weren't, didn't interest me. But what a great book. I loved it, and it was fun to go through it again. That's a big book. I didn't think it would take this long, but it's a big one. There's no page count in here, so I can't tell you how many pages it is. But it was a lot. A um, lot of firsts in it, and I love it, and uh, I'm glad I was able to share it. So that is all I have for now. Thank you for joining me once again, and I will talk to you next time.